<laughs> I'm Kurt Westby, Commissioner of Labor. This is Daryl Dudzinski, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Labor. Uh, good afternoon. Last week, uh, the, we had an average of about 2,500 unemployment insurance initial claims. This week, we're up to over 10,000 a day. Uh, and that number is rising up to probably 14,000, 15,000. By the end of today, it could easily be 15, 16,000. The system uh, wasn't particularly designed for that. It's an older system, but we're, uh, we're keeping it going. We urge everyone to, uh, to file uh, for unemployment through our, through our uh, website, um, file CTUI. Uh, to get those in, the system is uh, t is taking a little longer than we had than we had uh, anticipated. We have it's unprecedented the number of uh, cases that we have so far. Um, we are shifting resources to accommodate these incredible numbers that we've been experiencing. We're moving people from other areas in the Department of Labor to manage claims. We are trying to bring back as many retirees as possible to help manage claims. We are offer, uh, offering up overtime and some Saturday work to help manage these claims. And uh, even with all that work, all that heroic work by the tremendous staff here at DOL, uh, we are developing a backlog. So there will be longer waiting periods than normal, uh, so I uh, ask everyone who's filing for a claim to to please be uh, as patient as you can. On the employer side, we have an empl uh, an em employer hotline. Uh, you can you can find that uh, at the DOL website. Uh, that hotline explains programs we have, such as shared work, where if you want if you don't want to lay folks off, or if you don't want to lay a lot of folks off. You can reduce hours. Uh, workers can have a reduction in hours and also receive an unemployment benefit. That's good for everyone as far as we're concerned. Uh, we also have a furlough program, which I highly recommend to employers. If you have a return to work date, if the employer has a return to work date for the employees, uh, that process can be expedited uh, with, with, with much less processing time so we can get the, the unemployment checks out uh, much quicker. So again, I urge everyone to, to file for unemployment. If you have problems filing for unemployment and going online or using your, uh, your smartphone, get help from a friend. Get help from a, a loved one. Just get some help because as you probably know, uh, the American Job Centers have been closed to the public uh, per the uh, governor's uh, executive order, so we can't go that route. Um, so please be patient and uh, uh, use the online capacity. Thank you very much. I uh, and I'm now going to let the uh, deputy commissioner add some more pertinent information to that. Great. So um, from Friday evening through today, uh, we have received over 65,000 new unemployment applications submitted into our internet system. And again, that's filectui.com. Um, we are able to process, from, the, from Monday, we were able to process around 4,500 claims per day. We had about 20 to 25 resources uh, Monday. And again, working overtime, that's been uh, very supportive of this effort through, through the governor and the commissioner. We have begun to move staff into these areas to pro to help process the UI claims, and now we're processing more than 6,000 per day. So production's starting to grow, as you would expect, and we're triaging the best we can. We have uh, the dedicated merit rating unit, a uh, telephone line that's dedicated to the employers throughout the state of Connecticut. It's 860-263-6705. The merit rating unit will answer questions for employers about the furlough, as the commissioner mentioned. It is the absolute best automation we have. If the individual is being laid off temporarily from their employer, the employer should provide the separation packet, but more importantly, uh, the return to work date for that, for that employee. And that will help expedite the process. Um, overnight, their claim will be processed. 
uh, without any a, personal touches to it. Um, so again, highly recommended. In the meantime, we'll do our best to keep up with this claim load um, and we're working very, very, very diligently and we have amazing staff at the Department of Labor in Connecticut um, dedicated to serve. So as long as we can continue this, this process and hopefully um, our, even our own employees uh, don't become ill or, or uh, with, with severe anxiety of what's happening throughout the state and country and global, um, we're doing our best as well as others. So um, uh, please, hopefully the, the customer will be a little patient with us. Everyone will be made whole. It'll be retro from when they submit their claim and it may take a couple weeks um, but we will make them whole, and, and again, the, the unemployment insurance would be retro to them. When you say retro, typically, uh, I look, look, looking at the website, it looks like it starts from when they apply, not backdated to when they were perhaps lost their job or lost partial hours. Has that changed? Ba basically, our unemployment insurance internet system is 24-7, 365, so it does not shut down. Um, so when someone is unemployed, they should be filing right away, and then it'll be made effective the, the prior Sunday. And that's the best thing to do. Secure your rights, get your claims submitted, and then let the Department of Labor be, uh, begin that process for you. And that'll protect you and secure you for the retro, and there'll be no issues going forward. Also, under the commissioner's um, orders, uh, through law, the commissioner granted um, a waiver of, of a very important eligibility to unemployment requirement. And because of COVID-19 and during the duration of COVID-19, our Connecticut citizens who are unemployed due to COVID-19 are not required to look for work and, and keep those uh, track records of how they're applying and where they're applying for work during the COVID-19 uh, uh, period of time. So that's very, very important for our customers to know. Um, that that piece of eligibility for unemployment has been lifted. And commissioners, you spoke about the number of applications you were able to process. What percentage or how many of those applications were approved? Uh, we're not tracking how many are approved at this point because it'll, it'll take um, a, a few days for additional reviews and automation to um, uh, go, go forward with the entire approval process, but a majority of them if I had to estimate, I would say at least 90%, if not more, are going to be approved under the COVID-19 situation. And you said 4,000 Monday, 6,000 last night. Do we have a total number of how many through this week have been approved? Or? From Monday through noon today, it was over 26,000. We plan on another 3,000 end of business today, and then we are operational for the staff on Saturday. You know, we're talking about such large numbers. Do you have enough money to provide? So the, the, the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund has money um, f from the Connecticut uh, abilities to pay unemployment insurance at this time. Um, at this rate, what we're ex expecting is that um, the trust fund will not be, uh, will not have the sufficient money, but know that we're monitoring this um, daily and we're reporting out weekly and we're prepared that when the time comes that there, there, the need to borrow um, it, it will happen and there will be sufficient money. And this is, this is obviously happening throughout our country. All Department of Labor throughout the country are experiencing the same uh, um, pandemic, um, high unemployment volume. And the need to borrow is a relatively routine administrative process with the feds. So we will be initiating that uh, fairly soon. There's no doubt we will have to borrow at this point. But you're saying you won't run out, you will be able to borrow, you will be able to meet these claims? Yes, we will. Yes. How are you guys doing for the long haul here? I mean, we are, it's got to be the, you're the people that are the employees in the state. What are you doing for them? The, listen, uh, we're, we're dealing, frankly, we're dealing with a short haul right now. We're thinking about the long haul, but the staff are taxed. The staff are highly dedicated and working very hard. I'm uh, extremely impressed with the work that our staff are putting out right now. Uh, we're going to have to monitor the, long, monitor the long haul and see if we can get some more people in here to, to, to help with what we're doing because we, we can't be operating under an emergency mode forever. But uh, so far, uh, everyone has stepped up to the plate and we're, we're impressed.
you talk about mm-hmm. mental health, can you speak to that and how, I mean, this is hard. Even for us, seeing the numbers and having to report it is right. difficult. So I can't imagine what it's like. So just to, to um, uh, go with the commissioner, the commissioner has been very supportive, the governor and um, the governor's support staff, and, and we received tremendous help um, from day one of this epidemic, uh, pandemic, uh, from Monday on, the Department of Administrative Services and the technology and technology experts have been um, with us and in helping us make sure that we have the bandwidth on all of our programs that are internal to the Department of Labor. So we're very confident um, moving forward to be able to support uh, the bandwidth on our technology. We also have vendor that help us with our a couple of our online systems and the vendors have been attentive 24 seven and they're working through us. They're making many, many changes um, daily to make sure that we're able to accommodate such a large uh, growth in unemployment claims. Um, you know, th- this is something that no state has ever uh, been through throughout the country. And at Department of Labor, we're talking with all of our um, uh, agencies throughout this, uh, the country, the national office, United States Department of Labor, and our regional offices in Boston and Philadelphia. And so we're working together as a team uh, nationally and locally and right, right down to this, this building here in Wethersfield. Uh, very, very proud of our staff, very, very proud of the work that we do. Um, it's going to take time. Again, no one has ever seen anything like this. But more importantly, our staff, again, amazing staff, but they're just like everybody else. They have children in school that are home. They have, um, you know, they're concerned for their own well-being, high anxiety, um, stress levels, et cetera. Um, so we're, we are worried about them. We're doing our best to support them. The commissioner has utmost support and, 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 and um, trust in their ability to deliver, and they are delivering. And we're going to continue with that theme. You know, to, to refer to something that's uh, similar, um, there isn't nothing. But maybe we want to compare to the Great Recession that we just got through in 2008, 9, and 10, and kind of lingered in Connecticut. Um, that was taxing on our staff. But we had about a, we had about 500 additional employees here at the Department of Labor, um, and, and we're that much smaller. So th- this is a very different dynamic. We are very lean as far as staffing. Um, so we're very, very proud of the staff we have, and they're just doing amazing, amazing work. Will you be hiring? Uh, will we be hiring? Uh, we're bringing back some people now, but we have no immediate plans to be hiring a large number of people. We'll see how that goes. But just picking up on your earlier point of mental health, uh, there's a f- the physical health issue, too. We are actively monitoring our the six-foot rule. Uh, we are encouraging as many staff as possible to telework, to go home with computers, uh, getting those VPNs set up to, to, to minimize, uh, you know, any, any potential of spreading uh, uh, the coronavirus. And so far, uh, we've been successful with that. Are you fielding complaints from any companies and workers in any companies around the state about maybe companies that are not enforcing rules or maybe keeping people uh, in the office when they don't have to be? Well, I haven't seen any. We have an entire wage and hour division that would receive those complaints, and I don't get them every day. But um, if there were a lot of those complaints, I'd know about it. So I think that my impression is that people are working together out there so far, and everyone understands this pandemic and is trying to get through it. To, to, to the commissioner's point on that, we're getting many, many employer inquir- inquiries, questions about the law and the application of. And so we're, we're working to support the employers so that they make the right decisions for their employees. Um, but to Commissioner's point, um, there, it's just dialogue and, and understanding so that the businesses can make decisions to hopefully better support their employees. So that's great to have. And how many people have you tried to call back to work or how many people have you brought back retirees to process all this? Oof. Do you have an idea what the numbers We're are? looking at um, uh, just a handful of retiree uh, recalls. Um, you know, if, if they're available, if they're in this state, if they're available to work, you know, they have different situations too, and they're very scared about the, the current COVID-19. So it's understandable. Um, and, and so what we're looking at too is other employees that worked uh, for the Department of Labor and then maybe were promoted or went, in, went to another area, another state agency, we're looking to see if they can help us as well. And we have full support from the government, from the governor on, so it's been great. Hey, Commissioner, we did get a few complaints from people who said they trying to file online, that the system was crashing, yes. that they got halfway through. Could you speak to that, those concerns? The, it's a concern. The, the system has crashed a couple times. I think uh, uh, once Monday, once Tuesday, 
I believe uh, Wednesday. It's an overloaded system. It wasn't designed for anywhere near the numbers that we're experiencing now. Uh, we have expert technicians on it, keeping it going. Uh, but that's why I urged earlier for folks to be patient if, it, uh, if they can't get through to try later and, and uh, do it again. Right. It's important to know that, um, again, the system for the internet, right, file, ConnecticutUI.com is open 24-7, 365. So if it's down for an hour or two, know that we're working on it with our technicians, our vendor support service, and Department of Labor Information Technology experts, it will be back up. And just to keep trying, keep checking back. As they answer the questions on the unemployment insurance application, they should be saving uh, as they go through the application. So that data would be saved. So they basically, when they get back in, and they can complete the rest of the questions, save it, and finally, it's very, very important that they actually submit the claim at the end. If they don't hit the submit button, we won't have it. So they gotta actually submit it for us to process. So if it's taking them days to get through, what's, how's the backdating gonna work? It will not take them days. It may be down for a couple hours. The longest period we were down was Monday from 7 p.m. till midnight, 12.01 Tuesday morning, we were operational. And, and on Tuesday, as the commissioner mentioned, we were down for about two hours but no longer than that. And then you mentioned, Commissioner, talking to these employers, we are starting to see some mass layoffs. Some of them think they're doing the right thing because they want their employees to be able to go out and get the unemployment. Can you again speak to that and the fact that you're asking these employers to hold off on this full, or on these mass layoffs? Well, if, if there's any way that they can participate in our shared work program, that would be the, the, uh, the, the first thing. Uh, where you can uh, reduce the number of hours by 10 to 60 percent, keep them employed, and also uh, the, the unemployment office uh, agency here would, would, would offer an unemployment benefit. That's one thing. The furlough benefit, again, is uh, even more beneficial to everyone because it would expedite the process. Whoever is furloughed would get a check much quicker because it's completely automated. Uh, and you can go to the uh, DOL website to uh, and, and our fact sheet, our Q&A sheet to, to find more about the furlough process. That's the probably the smartest and quickest and best thing that employer that an employer could use um, to, to help us manage this crisis. The main thing you need uh, uh, under a furlough is a return to work date. Uh, as long as you put a return to work date in there, uh, we can get things going. Comp more and more companies have been doing that. I don't have an exact number now, but I hope it's going to be even more in the future. Right now, right now we're at about 10% of our uh, unemployed <clears throat> claimants are having that job attached, going through the furlough, as the commissioner mentioned. So that's fantastic, and that really expedites the process for them. Another important note is uh, another uh, uh, national concern is, is the actual banking industry. As we know, they're limiting their hours. Uh, um, some are by appointment only. And we understand now through our, our partners at, at Key Bank um, and, and other industries, the debit cards are beginning to be a problem. So we are constantly encouraging our customers to uh, sign up for direct deposit of their unemployment insurance. So that, that's a very key element so that if they sign up for the direct deposit, um, once they're eligible and we're paying them, it's, it's a two-day uh, process from their submission to, into their bank account. It could be their checking or savings. Um, if they don't have that ability to have the direct deposit and they have a debit card um, need, it, it will take 10 days for them, uh, for them to receive it. They are produced um, not in Connecticut, um, uh, but in another, another state. And, and, and as you would think, throughout the country, this is being a, a, a major uh, concern because there's so much volume, not only in unemployment, but in other programs that issued debit cards. It's not a matter of using it, it's getting the actual card to the people? That's correct. Physically Get, receiving yeah. the card. Through the United States Postal Service. I do have one question from one of our viewers that does bring up a concern. For those who are in the care industry or cosmetology and they own their own shops, um, can they receive these unemployment? benefits as well, or is that not possible for them at this time? So, so typically, um, if you're an independent contractor employment arrangement, you're, you're not covered by the unemployment insurance program. Um, but these are, these are typically case-by-case -case scenarios. So if you are, if you find yourself to be unemployed, um, you, you should file an unemployment claim. You may not be eligible, 
but at least let the Department of Labor make that decision with you and provide you notification that you are not eligible with appeal rights or protest rights to, to, to uh, dispute such, such findings. But at this point, it is case by case. We would encourage anyone in the independent contractor industry um, to file and, and let us make the decision. Again, it's going to take time. Um, it's going to add to the, the backlog, but we want to be able to respond to every single Connecticut resident and citizen uh, with the Department of Labor's instructions. Talking about gig workers, people like Uber drivers. Well, independent independent workers, 1099s, um, those individuals are typically not covered. But again, it is always a case by case, and sometimes um, there's a misunderstanding between the employer and employee, or or just the employee. And so we want to make sure we take uh, take care and, and answer any questions. Um, about that misunderstanding. What about people who are coming up, maybe they're already on unemployment, they're coming up against that, I think it's a six month deadline, right. and now the job prospects are not looking very good. Are they gonna be able to get an extension? Are you gonna press the feds on that? We are pressing the feds on that. In fact, the feds are pressing themselves on that. They're making a determination right now for extended federal benefits beyond the 26 weeks. I think we'll have an answer on that uh, within a week. Okay. Anything off the top? We came in a little bit late. What were you? Oh, we reacted. You got it. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. We're done. Thank you.